some kind of Is that any better? If you can hear me, let me know. There's a music filter on. It's very weird. How is it sounding now? Yay! Tremendous. Okay, that makes me stoked. <laughs> Awesome. Thank you so much for letting me know. Um, and how cool is it? This was something we could fix easily today. Sometimes there's technical problems that are a lot harder. Um, awesome. Hello. Welcome, crew. Um, time is now 2.35, but we're going to get in and get started. Yay. Um, I'm very excited to draw with you all today. So... First thing we're actually going to do um, is plan and practice a couple of the shapes we're doing today. So for the moment, if you want to grab a piece of whatever paper you might want to take notes on, this isn't going to be for our final drawing. We're just going to practice a few of the shapes and leaves we're going to do. Hi, Gemma. I haven't done any shout outs today. Get it quickly. Got Amanda. Got Annie. Gemma, Judith, who is my mom. Hi, mom. Um, 
so excited to draw with you all today. I'm just gonna, oh, it disappeared, didn't it? Um, two ticks, I'm just gonna get myself a bit zoomed in. See how well you can see, maybe that's gonna be okay. Let me know if you want me to zoom in a little bit as we go. I am, if you haven't streamed with me in a while, which is okay because I have not streamed in a while, um, changed my technical setup a little bit. So now there's more to manage, but it does mean um, that we are a little bit more technically advanced. When we get there. Um, awesome. So let's go ahead and we're going to practice a couple of the shapes we're going to do today. So this one, one we're going to do is our a couple of little things that we will use. We're going to practice these now so that once we combine them into the wreath um, we all find it nice and easy to draw them. First one we're going to do is just a little pine fronds camera there so if you can draw yourself a few little sticks so starting with the really basic one zoom us in even a little bit more do let me know if you at any point you can't see or are not in the camera enough it's absolutely fine awesome so we've Drawing ourselves around five little sticks. These ones are really easy. We're just going to do these. Try to fit at least two or three on each little frond. So nothing too intensive to get us started. Just little pine fronds. So that's just the stick in the middle and a V showing those sets of leaves going up up the stem you'll see they all look a little different none have to be perfect um, and there's a little like pine fronds if you think about pine needles that's what I was going for with these for this portion of our autumn autumn leaves Those are our little pine fronds. Starting off nice and easy. Um, and we're going to move on in just a moment. But yeah, that's our first little element there. Um, next little elements we're going to practice off are these little sort of sprouting seed pods um again they were a really nice little simple one um so to draw these we're going to draw an upside down teardrop shaped leaf with another thin leaf either side so if you start from the bottom up it's an upside down teardrop and it's sort of got thin oval either side and draw yourself about five of those. Good little handful. We're going to be working our way up. If you're tuning in for the first time, welcome. Um, and a big welcome back to people who have drawn with me before. Nice to see you. Um, if you're not in Christchurch, I hope the weather is also sunny where you are. Um, and I'd love to know where you're joining us from today, if you have time. Um, yeah, so this, this element is these little sprout seeds that we're going to add. And keeping on moving along, 
The next one we're going to draw is acorns. So to draw these ones, we're going to draw a small flat horizontal line, two little rounded sides and a wee stalk at the top. Coming in at the bottom, instead of drawing right from the outside, you're going to leave a little bit of overhang and draw almost like a pointy leaf shape at the bottom. So if you put that all together, they can be small, chunky, um, draw a few, try different shapes, try drawing some wide, um, and sort of see what you like style-wise. Once you've settled on a sort of size and shape that you like, um, what happened? I tried out on a really long one. It's probably too long, that one looks a bit like a cat. Um, but once you've settled on something that feels comfy, go ahead and try dry, try dry, try draw four or five matching little acorns. So when I say matching, we're talking about about the same size, same height, same width, um, and same ratio. And again, none of these have to be perfect. We're just combining all these little elements. If you can hear a cat sulking in the background, that is Frank. Um, he's feeling dramatic. So those are our little acorns there. So, so far we've done that pine fronds, some little sprouting seeds, and our acorns. Just three more elements that we're going to map out, and all of them are leaves. One of the things with the autumn palette is trying to include a bunch of different colors. I'm including green, but also like the orangey, red, and yellow. Um, so, now for many of us, autumn it's not just the sort of autumn colors, it's the range of colors, how many different colors, even looking out the tree. By my window, I can see red and orange and brown and yellow and green. All on one tree. <laughs> um, so that's what we're going to try. Combo a bunch of colours today. Okie dokes. So we're going to go ahead and do our first type of leaves. If at any point I'm moving along too fast, let me know in the comments and I will um, adjust. <laughs> um, cool. So for leaf one, we're going to give ourselves a few to practice on again. Let's give ourselves four of these wee twigs for our leaves to come off. Try to have them about the same length. Um, and map them out so they've got a good amount of space around each other. So let's start off with the first one. The first thing we're going to do is start at the top of the leaf and draw back towards the bottom. And as we go down, we're going to widen it a little bit so it makes that funny little twig shape. So it's wide at the bottom and thin, non-existent at the end. At the end of that, we're going to draw an eye-shaped leaf. So it's got a point at the top and a point at the bottom, and we can go ahead and give it a line down the middle. And we're going to map out our next leaves. So we're going to start off, if you remember with the pine fronds, we did Vs. We're sort of going to do Vs, but instead of making 
for these as we draw and we're just going to draw one half at a time so we're going to start off slightly smaller at the top get a bit wider going down and once more again and then mirror them stick it down once you've got those in we're going to turn those into more leaves so you'll see they get big as they go to the bottom So that's leaf number one. We've got four of them to do, so I'm going to go ahead and get started on the next one. Listen in and draw along if you need to. Otherwise, if you're feeling comfy, just go ahead and do all four at your own pace. I'll talk while I do the next one as well. So I'm starting at the top, going down and going out a little bit wider. So we've got this stick um, shape that's pointy at the end and wider at the bottom. And at the top, we're going to draw this leaf that's sort of an eye oval shape with a point on either end. Coming down, we're going to map out three more leaves on either side, and those are mirrored, so they're the same on either side. As they get towards the bottom, we've made the sticks a little bit longer. And again, if any of your shapes aren't perfect, just relax and enjoy the shapes that are coming up. One of the things we really love about leaf drawing, um, all of these different elements, just like nature, nothing has to be perfect or uniform. And let's do the next two. So we've got our two twigs. I might not talk my way through this one. Um, do really hard not to say what I'm doing out loud. So now that you know what is going on it. If you've been drawing your one and it's getting a little bit squashy, maybe the twigs are too close together or the leaves are too close together, um, just be mindful of that. Think about what extra space you might need to add now that you know what's going in there. And draw your own little sets of these simple little leaves. Awesome. So we'll give you just a minute to keep going and finish off your four. Um, if you're already done and want to do a quick fifth one, go ahead, have a practice. Otherwise, we'll just give it a little, a little minute. I know sometimes it takes a couple of goes just to get the hang of the particular thing we're drawing. So we've done four elements out of six. Yeah, it does look like that little emoji, Amanda. I like that. And get ready and we'll do the next one. So let's call this next one. Leaf two. And this one, we're going to draw another four twigs for ourselves.
So we're going to draw these sort of wibbly wobbly leaves this time around. We're going to start off by doing the same technique we used with the last leaves. We'll start at the top and thicken out the base. Right at the top, we're going to draw a little hill over the top. So it's not touching anything at the moment. At the bottom, we're going to draw two little lines. So you'll see that one on the left is pointing down into the left, the one on the right is pointing down into the right. Now the next thing we're going to do, don't actually draw these lines, but I'll draw them on mine, just so that you can imagine. So we're going to draw Bit of an egg shape as we go down so we're going to start with this top we're going to draw little wibbly wobbly hills that go out and then come into the bottom so there's no real perfect way to draw these um but the reason we the reason I drew the little egg is to show you that it's narrow at the bottom and narrow, uh, narrow at the bottom, narrow at the top, and its widest point is on the outside. Let's go ahead and draw another one of those. Sharpen your pencil if you need to. And again, so we're starting from the top, thickening out a twig. At the top, we're going to draw a little hill. And at the bottom, we're going to draw those two um, equal length <laughs> uh, little sticks pointing down. And then we're going to add this wavy leaf that goes out and back in. And go ahead and do the next two. And then you're on time. Remember, as you go to the middle, you want to go out to the widest part of that big shape. And connecting in at the bottom. There's no perfect number of waves to do. Um, they don't have to match. We just want them to be these nice flowing shapes. I'll give you another minute to do those. Sound of me typing. And that's our second leaf. Someone on Twitch, I've not really streamed much on Twitch. But hey, we're drawing a, drawing a wreath. Drawing a little autumn wreath. So if you're following along, let's do the last one before we check them all together into a wreath. And this one's going to be a little maple-y maple leaf. So for this one we're going to start by drawing four small stems, giving them a nice amount of space to go from. At the top of your stem you're going to draw a little dot, a pinhead. And we're going to draw five lines. So the first one is going to go straight up. It's quite long. 
second two are going to go out to the sides and the third two are going to go out like that. This is the first stem we drew plus these five extra lines. The middle one at the top is the longest, then it goes sort of medium length and then the shortest ones down at the bottom. And we're going to add some lines to them. The first thing we're going to do at the top is this little like roof shape. We'll go ahead and add those onto all three. All five, I should say. It's not our little stem at the bottom. Next thing we're going to do is go pretty much straight down, add these little smiley U shapes on either side of that little house roof. Now this is the most complicated one. <laughs> that is worth it. This is sort of a loose maple style. Loose maple style leaf. So we're going to join those. And don't worry, we'll go over this again with the next one too. So the first one that we're going to do is up the top here. We're going to do shape, which is going again, curving in and curving out. It's almost like we're drawing a little heart shape, but we haven't got the top of the heart. So if I show you on the other side, you're drawing a curve so that you're leaving a little spiky point. And then you're doing the same on the other side. Drawing a curve, drawing a curve. When you get to the bottom, instead of doing that same thing on the bottom, we're just going to do one smooth curve going across. Yeah, it, it definitely is a little bit like holly leaves. The last thing we're going to do is just make that stem into a little triangle. And if you've got your eraser handy, we want to get rid of all of those inside lines once we're done. So I saved the most complicated one for last. Um, but all good. If you've gotten to the end of one leaf, well done. Let's go through and do another one. So we've got our small stem and we're going to do that pinhead at the top. And we're going to draw five lines. So that long one going up. The next two longest going out. And the two shortest ones going out to the side at the bottom. At the top of each of those, I'm going to add that little house shape. And you see how it sort of pinches at the top? All of those lines have a bit of a curve in them. I like arrowheads, would have been a good way to say that. <laughs> and either side of those, we're going to do those sort of U shapes coming down. And 
and then join them with the two lines at the bottom. Set for, oh, made a bit of a mistake on that one, um, except for the bottom leaves, which you're just going to have one curved line joining them. And then we turn that stem into a little triangle. So it's in a scooch more. Okie dokes. I'm going to talk you through one more and get you to do one by yourselves and then we'll be starting to get our wreath design together. So we've got small stem, pin head, and then those lines. Long one at the top medium length out to the sides and then the bottom ones are the shortest. At the top we have the house shape, so arrowheads. And coming down these small curving inwards lines on each of these. And then we join them with those last pointed shapes. Remember, it's like the bottom of the half curving in. And then at the bottom, we've got the one line. So hopefully you're at three or almost three of those drawn so far. And go in the head and I won't talk through this one. Just try to talk yourself through. I quite like that Gemma with it, with the hungry caterpillars. They are a bit of a funny spikily leaf. That's why I've been calling them a not quite maple. <laughs> I was looking at all of the different autumn leaves to do. Um, and I thought it'd be fun to do one that was more blobby, which was that second leaf we did, and then another that was a bit more spikily. even though they might feel a bit funny looking um once we get them on the wreath they'll look quite cool together i'm gonna give you another minute to finish that one up and then we're gonna start constructing our wreath We're going to be working kind of backwards. So once we've done the wreath, we're going to start with those most complicated leaves, then work our way back down all the way to those little pine fronds that we started with. <coughs> Keep forgetting to breathe. <laughs> so just one more minute. And then we'll keep going. Awesome. So I will zoom this out a little bit. 
get back to our main paper. Let's see what our wreath is going to look like. So to start off, we're going to draw a circle to use as the base for our wreath. Make sure there's a little bit of space either side. This one, A4. Make sure there's space either side, top and bottom. Try to center on the page. And then give yourself a nice light circle to use as the base. Just like that. <laughs> I'm trying to get my camera just about right. <laughs> Annie, those ones are a little bit difficult, but you've got it. I, I bet. <laughs> okay. So now we're going to map out um, our wreath. And we're going to start off um, by imagining we've got a bit of a clock. And we're going to do a round circle just on the on the outside where you imagine your sort of 12 o'clock to be just a small light circle to place hold it for yourself so we're going to do one at 12 o'clock if it was a clock then straight down at the bottom in the middle again at six o'clock and the same for imaginary three o'clock and imaginary nine o'clock So we've got little circles there at 12, 3, 6, and 9. This was a clock. And then halfway between each of those points, I want you to mark a little X. And it doesn't need to be perfect. You can get your ruler out if you want or just... Um, map it with your eyes. A roundabout is totally fine. Remember to keep your pencil work nice and light so we can erase, um, erase things at the end. And so that's going to be the basic features um, of our wreath mapped out there. One thing I want you to think about is that everything we draw is going to be going in a clockwise direction. You can give yourself a little arrow if you need, um, but you don't need to worry too much. I don't know if you can see those. That's just a reminder. So every time you're drawing anything coming off the circle, instead of going anti-clockwise in the direction, they're always going to be pointing clockwise. Awesome. Let's get going. So as I said, we're going to start off with those spikily leaves. And we're going to do those at the point where we've got the X's. So from that X, we're going to draw the spikely leaf. So how did we do that? We did the small stem. And then it had that pinhead, 
shape. Remembering we're always going to be drawing it um, going clockwise. It's going to be going up. We'll do the tall top, then the next two lines, and then those bottom two. And don't worry if you go over your circle lines. That's totally fine. And then let's draw features of that. Just going to zoom us in a little bit more, hopefully. And see okay there keep your pencil work light I'm gonna make mine a bit dark so you can see what I'm doing and let's do those remember that the arrowheads are the little pointed houses at the top and then they have the little curving in lines And then we join them. Oh, I missed one. And at the bottom, they had one curved line. Just this nice, chunky, chunky little thing. Your working lines get confusing at any point erase them um but otherwise that's the general shape you want and don't forget to have that little triangle stem at the bottom and you don't need to worry too much about joining on um because this wreath is not going to keep a central stem it's going to be a little bit more use a little bit of negative space new for us just take your time don't stress out too much about it but once you are done the next one we're going to draw those on the inside of the wreath and um, at each of those four x's so we've done one and we need to do three more easiest way i find is to just keep rotating the paper so that hey Rita, um, so that a another um, so that the X sits where it was um, where you drew the first one. So you're keeping the angles the same. You don't have to contort your arm around. And so let's practice that one again. So remember, we're on the inside of our circle. We're going to draw a small line in with that pin here top and then it had longest line going up shortest at the bottom and those medium ones side arrowhead house roof things on the end of each one And those little internal lines. I'm going to stop saying what I'm doing out loud just in case anybody um, is getting put off by it because it's at a different speed. Um, but if there's a bit that you want me to go over again, pop a comment in and I'll do it again. <laughs> Otherwise, I just want to make sure we've got leaves. Um, these spiky leaves at each of those four X's that we mapped out. Just remember to keep turning the paper as you go. And these ones are always going clockwise and always on the inside.
<laughs> done one very weird one. And just keep drawing at your own pace. Um, once you've done those four, if a few people could let me know in the comments when they've finished them and I'll know that for my timing and um, that it's the right time to move on. Every now and then when I'm drawing wreaths, I collect so many sauces or bowls or things to draw circles with. And then when I clean my desk up, I'm like, why are all the these here? It's because I've used them all to draw wreaths. I think that's quite good, Annie. Annie said done, but hers are quite chunky. And I like that. Um, chunky little spikily maple type leaves are a good thing, I think. And a man just finished, his hairs are a little bit bigger proportionally to the circle. Mine might end up being a bit crowded. Um, and that's totally fine. If they are crowded, there's ways you can space it out. This is quite a nice, um, quite an interesting wreath because it's got a little bit more space. And Gemma's done. Let's wait for one more. See how we go. Yeah, the more you look at it, the more things you see. I can see that mine aren't all the same size, but it's fine. It'll even out. I'm cold here today. I'll give you one more minute if you're still going. Or we keep moving on. So that was leaf three we just did and then we're going to work our way back and the next one we're going to do are those wibbly wobbly second leaves. And by the time our hands are tired from drawing, kia ora thanks Vicky, Vicky's done as well so we'll keep moving on. By the time we're all tired from drawing the leaves we'll get back to those nice simple ones at the beginning. Okay, ducks. The next ones we're going to draw those round leaves. We're going to be drawing those where we mark those circles out before. Now, one thing that I have done is draw quite close in. Um, I maybe haven't left enough room here, so I'm going to bring bring this leaf in a little bit. But I thought I'd just talk about that in case you've done the same thing. You can just move things in a small amount. So ideally. These ones, they're going to be sort of going out from the circle. But because I know I'm not going to be able to fit it in there, I'm going to bring bring mine in a little. So it awesome. Great is done too. It's great. So we're going to draw those in. And if you remember, um, they're always going clockwise. So we're going to draw that stick in first. And if you've got the space, um, you could draw your stick almost coming off the circle. But we've got that stick in, and then we're going to start at the top. Shall I zoom us in again? How's that? <laughs> too much, too much. Awesome. So we've got our stick, and we're going to start at the top. 
then go down and thicken out the line. Then at the top of that leaf, we're going to put that little hill shape. And at the bottom, we have the two lines coming down out of either side. Then if you remember, we wanted to have it the thickest at the middle and we drew those big wavy lines. And if for space you've brought it in like me, just remember you kind of want to match it and keep that uniform as we go around. If you've drawn it on the outside, again, you kind of want to match it. So that all four ones on your wreath are about the same place in terms of whether they're inside or outside or half in and a half out of that circle we've drawn. And again, we can rotate our paper and keep going. So we drew the stick. Try to keep the sticks on your wreath all about the same length as you go around. And thicken it out at the bottom. Add that little hill bump at the top and the two lines at the bottom. And add in those curvy, wobbly lines. And then just keep going at your own pace at each of those circle points until all four of your leaves are done. Those ones should be a little bit quicker to draw, but don't worry if you're not done yet. Just take your time and go at your own pace. And again, you might have different relationships of sizes than mine. Those wobbly leaves are bigger than my spikely leaves, but on your wreath they might be the same size or the other way around, and that's totally fine. Just keep drawing them at your own pace. Awesome, Rit has done those ones. Do sound off a bit if you are done. Let's give you another couple of minutes. Awesome, Philip is done. It's a nice thing, all your familiar names, it's lovely. Awesome, a few more done. Give it one more, half a minute. Awesome, thanks team. Okie dokes. 
10, you remember which leaf we're doing next to which element. So we started there, come back to these. And now we're on to that first little leaf we did. So for these ones, we're going to map them out. And this is where you can sort of use your own judgment about how much space you've got left on your wreath. We're going to try to put two of these in between every other element. And you might, like I can see here, I haven't got that much room up here. Totally fine, you can use your judgment. So what I would like you to do is try to put two, and we're going to draw those lines coming off our circle. See where the maple leaf, spiky leaf came on the inside, we're going to draw a twig on the outside. Then if you can fit one in, an alternating one on the inside and keep going round. So we went outside, inside, and the next one. We'll just keep going. So that should be inside, outside this time. And just try to have a pair, one inside, one outside. Um, coming off the circle as you go around. Try to keep the sticks the same length. And if you can, fitting in two in between each of those others. You might just be able to fit in one in a spot and that's okay. Um, or you might like I did try to squeeze them in to where you can. So try to map them all out before you start drawing them. The reason it's nice to do that is because this is the easiest time to get all those sticks about the same length. If you haven't got as much space anywhere, just make do with the space you've got. Um, it'll be totally fine. And let's zoom in. I'll go back over how we did those. So, if you remember, we've got our stick. And again, we're going to give it that little stalk. At the top, we did that eye-shaped leaf. And then three leaves on either side coming down. And that's how that one goes. The next one going outside is the same, but just pointing on the outside of your wreath. So just go through. And map those out. In your own time. These ones might take a little bit longer to draw because there's quite a lot going on and there are so many more of them. I think the others each just had four of each leaf. These have, I think, 16 um, of each. So just go through, as I said, in your own time and draw those. And if you need to follow along once more, I'll do one more um, that I talk through. So we've got our stem, we thicken it out at the bottom. And we do that eye-shaped leaf at the top. And then three pairs of matching angled leaves coming down. Nice job. And I'll zoom out and just keep doing this one at your own pace.
can if you ever run out of room. That's totally fine. Just fit what you can. Again, this is quite a nice wreath if you want to pop a wreath on a card. It's got that nice amount of space in the middle if you want to write the message on. And just keep rotating your paper as you go so you're always drawing in the most comfortable angle for you. And as I said, there's quite a few of these, so just take your time, enjoy drawing them. And work your way methodically through them. in the class in a little while so it's quite nice to draw with you all though I always feel a little rusty I went out to Rotoro last weekend, which was really nice. Got to see my family, my parents, my granny. Very restorative seeing fam. Quite a few leaves that are like these ones, Rita. I initially, um, I have some reference sketches that maybe I'll pop up. Um, but yeah, I initially started off actually with Corfi leaves, trying to have something that was uniform. Um, but yeah, so I don't have a very good answer for that. Um, when I was playing around trying to work out these, um, all the elements I just drew many many leaves um, and then kind of picked ones that were really different to go together but I will find it out for you yeah the wiggly one is very is very oak like if you like how carefully I'm not saying oak because <laughs> they're definitely um, quite illustrative leaves
It's the closest um, one. I'm trying to flick it through. Uh, it's almost olive, olive leaves. trying to do some of the some of the leaves that stay green during autumn so spoiler when we color these um these these leaves are um, going to be green not all of them just this plant in particular. <laughs> Yay, nice as the reed set to fill out. Um, it is okay, Amanda, because the reason we have so many elements is because we need to fill all the, all the negative space. So if it's looking full, that's a good thing. Um, this one, once we erase everything, really needs to look quite full um, to keep that wreath thing. I love that, Rita. Yeah, Rita says, wreath of leaves is looking good, which I like. So nice once everything comes together a little bit. So just keep going in your own time. I know there's quite a lot of those. Um, for people who, as you come finished with that portion, I just want to show everybody a couple of things for lining. Because once you finish up drawing in those leaves, the next thing we're going to do is go in with the black pen and line. So there's a few lines we absolutely do not want to include with the black pen. So one of those is you don't want to put that black pen line, you just want to ignore that pencil line for the circle we initially traced. Don't color that one in in black pen. Um, and the other is those O's and X's that we use to map the shapes or directional arrows if you've got those down. Don't black pen those. What we do want to black pen is all of the um, all of the leaf lines. So that might be the stems and the outlines. When it comes to the maple leaves, you want to do all of the outside. It's quite a chunky pen I'm using for quite small lines. It's looking a bit weird. That's okay, but we don't want to do those inside lines. We just want to do the outside ones. I just thought I'd quickly go over that. So for this design, we just don't want to do, don't want to add the circle in. <laughs> so once you're ready, you can go through and do all of your little leaf stems and shapes with the black outlining pen. Um, depending on what size pen you've got, if you've got options, use a small one, I think. So when I'm using is a little chunky. The lines are coming out quite dark. Oh, Annie, that sounds beautiful. Annie says her window looks out to a forest, pansy, Japanese maple, and plane trees, and very autumnly. I love that. I'd love to see a photo. I love the autumn colors. Um, so yeah, grab your pen. If you're at the point where you're ready to do that, Definitely use the finest pen you've got. Um, this one I'm using, as I said, is a little chunky. 
and just keep going around. One thing to note is if you're right-handed um, or left-handed, you want to work in whatever way isn't going to have your hands smushing and rubbing across the things you've just inked. So for me, because I'm right-handed, I start on the left and I work my way over to the right. If you're left-handed, you're going to want to start inking on the right side and work your way over to the left. And just once you're ready to go, just go through and ink over all of your leaves. And it'll take a little bit of time because there's quite a lot of detail. And he's using the 0 0.2. I should have done that. I'm using the 0 0.5 and regretting it, but I'm too scared to change because then my lines will look all different widths. <laughs> So just going for it with this chunky, chunky monkey pen. The next online class I'm doing, can I remember the date without looking it up? I absolutely cannot. Um, but it's an acrylic painting one. Got a few different things on the go at the moment. Um, so yeah, I'm doing acrylic, um, acrylic painting little landscape in June. And what else have I got coming up? I've got a couple of in-person things in Christchurch. Once I book a trip back up to the to I'll make sure I do. I'm trying to make sure I do like a free class and a paid class to give people options um, when I go home. So usually the free class is illustration um, because it can easily fit in to a couple of hour window and a longer one if it's painting that sort of thing. Then getting it right into lots of crafts at the moment. Making earrings. Do any of you make make your own jewellery? And a really fun thing at the moment. Although I went for coffee the other day and I was wearing a pair that I made. And the guy who was making the coffee was like, I love your earrings. And I was way too enthusiastic and excited about him complimenting them. <laughs> it's very, um, had to dial it back a little. <laughs> but it was nice. I'd quite like to do a watercolor class painting a goose. Um, my parents have a very lovely co collection of geese at their house. I had it on my mind that it would be quite fun to do a watercolor goose because they are white and that's a really fun, fun thing to paint in watercolor. Still got that class, Amanda, that I prepped on doing a rainbow trout. Um, it was right when I started having a lot of trouble with Facebook. And I must say I've been using like a paid service now to stream the classes. It just seems to have a lot less connection issues.
Anybody else getting a tired hand? Quite soothing when you're doing the outlining because all the stress of trying to draw the shape initially is gone and you're just following all the lines you've already worked out, which is quite nice. Rita's also finding this part a little therapeutic, which I like. It's, it's also the bit after this I like, weirdly. You know how they say colouring in, it's really soothing, and it's extra nice when you're colouring in a picture that you've drawn, I always think. That's so true, Amanda. Amanda said, she finds that moment when you erase the pencil lines really magical, like it was all messy and then suddenly you get this lovely line work. Super true, it's really nice when it comes out all clean. All the crisp lines. And I doodle leaves a lot now. They're just a nice repetitive thing if you're in a, <laughs> in a meeting concentrating hard. And no pressure at all. But once you have finished um, getting your line work in, pop a message in. I know it takes a little bit of a little bit of a time to get all of those ones done. Just take your time. I'll keep chatting away intermittently. <laughs> So 
stretching my fingers out because I feel crampy from drawing all those little lines intensively. <laughs> Plus, it's really nice. I've got this function now that I can zoom in by clicking, which is a lot easier than before when I'd strap my phone up on a bunch of different, literally sometimes just taped up concoctions. And then when I had to zoom in, it was slightly stressful because I might knock the whole thing over. So it's been quite nice just having this click of a button to zoom. It's been good. And again, this type of wreath is one you could do with any type of um, foliage or stuff you wanted to put in. You could make it spring themed by picking spring colors and spring foliage. Um, yeah, or winter themed. If you went that way, you could introduce a few icicles. Icicles, what am I thinking of? Well, icicles and um, it's like snowflakes, that's what I'm thinking of. Yeah, I'm glad you're having a good time, Dickie. It's really satisfying once they've, they've all appeared, isn't it? We're going to give ourselves a good amount of time for the black ink to dry off. before we erase so that we don't one of the saddest things when you draw this is if you're tempted to erase too soon and you end up with smudgy ink. You'll be able to see once they're all inked, especially whether you've got much space to put some little extra bits and pieces. We're going to do the acorns after we've erased pencil. They'll be one of the brief ones that we do straight in pen, or you can do it in pencil first, still and, and go over it. Um, <laughs> It is quite a big one to do the inking on, isn't it, Annie? It's, it's lots of stuff going on. I wish I knew how to make wreaths with actual leaves. My sister-in-law often makes these beautiful, like, Christmas wreaths that I think are just stunning. I always keep the photos so I can use them as inspiration when I draw. I was pretty amazed by anybody who does stuff with plants and flowers and makes them look effortlessly amazing. So if you're still going, just keep going. Persevere, you'll get there. And if you've already finished, give your hands a little bit of a stretch. Wiggle your fingers and get all your circulation going back again. Awesome, genius done. The other thing you can do if you're already ready to go is sharpen up some colored pencils. You can probably tell all the colors we're going to be using. It be yellow, orange, red, brown, green. It's quite tempted to try. I've got a box of the Derwent pencils that I'm interested to try with. Just like these normal ones, I use too much. I have to wait till they're used up before I crack into another one. Yeah, so you can get the colored pencils ready. Stretch out. Taking a couple of behind the scenes photos, you can see what it looks like when I'm streaming at my desk, streaming classes. <laughs> I 
in these shorter winter days, aren't they, when they start to feel it getting dark, even though it's not quite yet four o'clock. And we're gonna be on the final, final stretch again soon. I think I might do is swatch out some pencils while I'm waiting. See what colours I'm working with. It's another thing you can do. So you want an orange. Amanda's done. Rita's done. Let's give it a couple more minutes. Philip is done. Awesome. So as I said, you can get your pencil sharpened. I must have dropped this one. It's awfully broken. I have got one cat who likes to keep the pencils standing in a little container like this, and she likes to come along and chew on things. She leaves me all of these pencils like this that are full of tooth marks. She's pesky but she's lovely. And a green. I tried a green that feels a bit too limey. Yeah, so just figure out which of your colours you're keen to use. So you're wanting an orange, a red, a yellow, a brown, and a green. Let's give it 30 more seconds. And if you are still going, don't, don't feel anything. If you're still going, it's totally fine. Just follow along. The other nice thing is if you do get behind it all, um, I leave the video up and you can come back to where where you were and keep going. So now if it's had a bit of time to dry, we can start erasing. If you are still, if you've only just finished and you want to give it a bit longer, as I said, swatch out your pencils, get them sharpened, um, have a sip of water. But otherwise, it's always nice to do a test on one thing and see whether or not your pencil or pen ink is dry. If it seems dry, then you can go ahead and erase all over. One of the interesting things with this design, and you'll see once, once you do start erasing, is how much that Whatever space there is, even if it's just a little, how much that space will really start to pop out. Once we take all of the pencil lines away. People often ask which eraser I'm using. I don't promote much. Um, but this is just like a, quite a basic Faber-Castell one that erases real good. I didn't used to have a favorite eraser, but now I am a person with a favorite eraser. <laughs> I haven't. It's nice though once you find something that works well for you. Even nicer when it's not something spendy and fancy. It's just something that's affordable in this economy.
Okay, there you go. Dust away or erase the dust in. And get yourself ready for the next bits. Just take your time doing that and have a good look over. Try to not miss any of the spots. Hopefully. It's all dry enough for you to erase now. And again, if you just let me know if you're ready to move on to the next step. As I said, the next step we can either do, you can go in straight with pen, which I'm going to be doing, um, or you can go in with pencil first. But we're going to be adding those last three elements, so the acorns, the sprout seeds, and the pine fronds. If you are already ready, you can go ahead and practice a couple more of the bits you want to add on. We're working our way back to that nice, simple, simple elements we started with. Just realized it's showing that little QR code on the screen. That'll make it go away nice. Yeah, as I said, it's quite a new, new way of sharing video. Just get everything nice and erased. Get yourself ready to go and we'll go into the final stretch. Just let me know if you're ready to go on to the next bit.
awesome couple of people ready so far. <laughs> Amanda's been watching the Super Mario movie. We went and saw that a couple of weeks ago and I've had that Peaches song stuck in my head. <laughs> Let's give it one more minute and then we'll keep going through. So I'll just... Refresh your memory on where we're at. And what we're adding in. Next. So we're doing acorns. If you remember, we've got a whole variety of acorns to choose from. Um, maybe give yourself a practice one. And want to do it straight in the end. So you could start it horizontal line, round it with a little stem on the top and come in a little bit and do the acorn bottom so the top sort of overhang in the bottom. Now when we add these onto our wreath you always want if you've got edge of the wreath, the edge of the wreath that's nearest you, then you always kind of want to have your acorns hat on the left hand side. So what I'd like you to do, and you can do it in pencil or pen, I'll go in that pen, is find sort of six eight spots around the wreath, distribute it a bit where you can add in a little acorn. that I'm doing it. Um, so you're wanting to keep it in towards the middle of the bushel of, of leaves and things and just find find some little spots. This one here and because the acorn's not too big you can sort of fit him in there. And try it to, it doesn't have to be perfectly balanced, but you can try to have, let's yeah, so say that six to eight, find some little spots on your wreath to put them. It's really easy to go nuts and do heaps. But we've got a couple more pieces we're going to add in. I say that as I'm adding in heaps of them, but they're quite fine. But these don't have to be in any particular spot. Just try to have at least on a few different spots so they're not just all on one part of your wreath. Got them going around the other so you keep them in tight in the middle of your wreath. You don't want them floating out in space too much. Try to challenge yourself to find six to eight spots to pop those little acorns in. You don't need to fill every inch of space with the acorns because we've got more stuff to add. Got all our little acorns in. I'm going to give you one minute before I'm going to keep moving on to the next bit. Sorry, not the camera. So 
So we had acorns. The next one was going to be sprout seeds. So even if you've got an acorn or two left that you'd like to draw, I'm going to show you the next bit. It's those sprout seeds. If you remember the way we drew those, it's an upside down teardrop. Put it in like a flat oval leaf. I'm Again, I'm adding the straight and pen. You can add it in pencil if you like. We just want to add those as well. Tight into where those bases of all the stems leaves are. And you want to add a few of those little sprout seeds. And just wherever you can and just feel like they might look good. They can go next to an acorn, they can go by themselves. Sometimes I hear the words I say in this so when is the last time I said acorn this much in the day? But you'll notice how the wreath is probably starting to feel a little more together. And we're really getting that nice sort of full foliage leaf thing going on. We try to do things quite balanced with the bigger leaves. Um, they provide enough balance that with the smaller elements we can just put them in their space and use them as filler. Probably the same as how people do floral arrangements and stuff. So if you were doing six to eight acorns, you'd probably want, I don't even know what number to put on it, but probably twice as many of these little seed sprouts. But a really nice little filler item. But they are not our last item. So, okay, let's get into the quickish end of what we're drawing. We're moving quite quick, but that's okay. These are quite nice small ones to add in. So you're going to have maybe another minute and a half of seed sprout add in time before we go on to our last little element, which if you remember was those little pine fronds. So this was a new wreath for us, even those who've done every single wreath class I've ever done. <laughs> Um, I don't usually always do a stem of some kind or a branch or something, depending on yeah, this is quite a fun one because there is a branch. But that's why we're doing all these other little elements. We get them all added in. So another 30 seconds before we're going to move on to our last element that we're adding. And again, let's go over that one quickly with the notes. This was the very first thing we did, which was a little stem and then two or three little pairs of V-shaped leaves on the And this will not surprise you by now, but we're going to try to find some nice tight into the center of the wreath spot to add those. And just 
find small gaps. Let's add a few of those in. And you'll see how quickly you end up with quite busy little wreath. So you should, should have quite a well rounded out wreath now. You see, if you haven't got that actual circle, then you definitely got a good solid feeling. Hopefully your wreaths are feeling good. The last thing you need to do is add colour. And I know we're not running late per se, but definitely we are approaching the two hour mark for the class. So I don't want to keep you too long. Um, I'll give you one more minute of pine fronding to your reads. You don't want to add too many, you don't want to take too long and be too perfectionistic over it. Um, but I do want to show you my colour. Probably going to keep running until I've colored everything on my one even if it runs over a little I don't know some people will need to go firmly um on the 430 mark so I'm going to go over how we color each of the elements um just in case anyone needs to brace off so I'm going to start that now so if you're ready to go is quite good if you can color along with me. So okay, the first color we're going to use is brown. <laughs> so if you take your brown and you've got two shades of brown, I want you to pick the darker one. We're going to go to our maple leaves. Or in the order that we drew them. And we're going to draw a center square and put a line sort of going in the direction of each leaf. Once you've got that thin and brown, then we're going to come in with a red and color in the leaf. And so these ones are our autumnal red leaf that we're adding in. And you can also colour in the stem of that one brown. So that's the maple leaf. Let's do one more of those. So we've got our leaf. We're going to colour in the stem brown. Do a centre stem in the middle of the dark brown again. Do a line of it in the direction of each of the leaves. Colour it red straight over the top. And that'll give you that element. It's likely leaves. So 
the next one we're going to do. And it's with our red and orange. I'm just going to use it yellow a little bit. But we're going to take our red pencil. And we're going to draw little lines coming out of each side on its round leaves. Start it against the leaf and just draw little lines coming out of each side. Every stem that we're doing is going to be brown, so if I forget any of these, the stem of the leaf is brown. <laughs> so use the pencil to draw those lines coming out. I'm going to start in with orange, colouring orange at the centre of that leaf. It can be quite patchy, but you want it to all both sides of the where that stem is, you want to cover with orange. Then on the outside, mix in with a yellow. It'll give you quite a nice fiery to me. Like, and I'll show you the thing. One more. So, and I see the steam of all of these are brown. Nothing too hard to remember. Oops. We use a red so draw lines out either side of the steam. And when we colour in the leaf itself, we can do nice orange in the centre of the stem. And yellow otherwise for that leaf. So that's two of our leaves, which have a little bit more interest and colour to them. These next sets of leaves, burning through them a little bit, just to get them all in in case you need to get off. So that middle stem, brown. On every flower, and once you go in, everything you might just want to every flower, every leaf, and you might just want to go around and do that with the brown. Other thing that's going to be one layer of brown is the acorns. Just give them a really nice light shade. We don't want to make them too complicated. Um, you can do a little bit darker on the back once you give. A little bit of interest. So using brown and just with the stems of these green and the acorns. And if you want to do them a bit black on their hat, that is a thing. <laughs> and otherwise, these watermelon leaves, none of these leaves are our green leaves. And nothing fancy on these. Oh, gosh, these pencils must have been through the walls. They were all a little broken. Um, yeah, these are just solid green. A bit of a surgery on this pencil. One solid colour of 
screen. And the only other thing that we're giving color to is going to be those little seed sprouts. And I like to do those in yellow. Autumn. And so even though it's not all colored in yet, should be getting a sense of how that looks come together. If you need a head off now, it's probably a good point. As I said, I am just gonna keep keep streaming the class um while I finish my one off. I'll talk to you much. If you need to head off, thanks so much for joining us today. It's been really nice, very soothing. Also then. <laughs> um, and hopefully if you haven't finished colouring in, which you probably won't have if I haven't, um, hopefully you feel comfortable with all of the colours you need to have. Sorry, it's a little bit of a complicated, complicated design. But it's fun, isn't it? <laughs> so just keep hitting around and adding all those little elements in. Quite a fun fiery color palette. Remember to keep sharpening your pencil as you go around, especially when you're drawing some of those smaller shapes. You might need a bit more precision. Probably getting to the stage where I'm going to go around and do all of the brown at once now. I keep changing pencils. If you minutes. And remembering we use the brown in it. Maple stem. Thanks so much Rita. It's really nice to draw with you today. Um, and once you've finished I'd love to see your picture. Cheer. Have a good rest of your day. What's our time? 4.32. It's to feel like we're getting excited for dinner because we don't have to cook tonight. Got it sorted ready. Little things in my At my parents' house, they will be starting feeding all their animals. Our cats would love to be fed early but make a six o'clock dinner for them. So I've done all the brown elements now onto the red. So put the brown in the center of those maple leaves and now I'm coloring the maple leaves. Spiky little bits of detail on these. Not 
winter much longer and it'll be winter again. I hope we get some snow in Christchurch. I've been joking this last year that we have promised. Promised if we moved to Christchurch it would get snow. Just because I really wanted it to snow. Um it'll be so good as well. <laughs> but now that's my baseline for Christchurch winter. So I need at least one snow. Right? Not really much snow. Still quite nice. I've now I've used orange and it's just to put the center color on those round leaves. And <laughs> Amanda's based in Queensland and so she said she knows she's coming to visit. I love that. Just need to give enough notice so we can book them. Absolutely. We don't go to the actual snow much. But this makes you feel like part of a very big world when it snows. So with the yellow, I'm just coloring in all the seed sprouts and then the outside. The other thing you could also do with an autumn leaf um, is draw all the same leaves but in different colors to show the change in things. I always like doing quite a few. It's just so hard to pick and it's nice if you do a few leaves and you get a few different shapes. I like the sound of Annie's outlook with the autumn, autumn view out the window. So, I forgot to mention I was very grateful for people still came even though I had to move the class from Saturday to Sunday. It's been quite a hectic week here this week. Let's get a bit of work done. And we're supposed to be out today. Um, the event was cancelled, and so I used the opportunity to draw on a Sunday instead, which was quite good. Really setting. Once you've got all the color on, always it's extra soothing to look at. So these leaves were just a solid green because they've already got the detail of that center center line in each of them. We need to color onto those little pine fronds. Just to keep them nice and skeleton. -y. You could always add a little bit of color onto them, but I quite like them without it. So they stay nice and spiky. This is pretty much my reason. Last, last little bit. Um, I hope that the ones are not too far off either. It's been really nice to draw with you today. Um, and as I said, there's little bits and pieces coming up over the next while. It is always nice if you've got a particular thing you want to do for a time of year that you like to do. 
particularly <laughs> we get in touch I always seem to I use um, I wish I'd use this lighter green instead of the dark one but there we go <laughs> um I'll be heading off shortly so that you can draw without the sound of me <laughs> um If you've done a reach today, I'd love to see it. Um, and it's also a menu. Pop it, pop it on your fridge. Put it on the cover of the notebook. Make a card. Um, yeah, it's a really simple uh, and fun kind of method-based autumn wreath. Hopefully, if you've done other classes, I mean, I know a bunch of you who are very talented um, artists, you'll be able to put your own spin on that kind of design. Um, I totally relate. Amanda, I have sat for hours coloring them perfectly, um, but I learned that it's, that it's not very exciting for people watching. <laughs> um, but yeah, I will be closing off the stream class shortly um just a big thank you for coming along i will track a link to my classes page on my website up for you if you're wanting to have a look um otherwise yeah i will in the next class that one coming up this month how's that um over the next couple of months doing a couple of free classes and a couple of paid classes in christchurch um, I have a landscape class coming up on June the 11th in the afternoon. Um, and then as well as just a couple of YouTube videos. One on just sharing how I create color palettes for illustration. Um, and another one on some ways to swatch and store and understand your watercolor supplies, whether they're pencils or food paint or palettes. Yeah, thank you so much for joining me um, and have an awesome Sunday afternoon, probably, wherever you are. <laughs> Okie dokes, bye for now, see you.